I just finished an electrical system for a sprinter van conversion. Now this is an 800 amp hour lithium based system and it was designed to be able to power an air conditioner off grid, specifically a DC air conditioner, as well as run an induction burner. I fielded a number of questions about how I actually did this setup and so I want to talk through all my component selection and hopefully help you build yours. Now these are some static images and I'll be talking you through it. First off, this was a custom build with some custom built batteries. All this stuff right there is a custom built battery that I will talk through at the very end, but that's probably the least relevant for most people. So the first thing I want to, to actually talk about is cable selection, because you'll notice that there's a number of different types of cable here. We've got this cable up here. We've got some fatter cable down here. You can see there, there's some white cables uh, over there. Additionally, there's something right here. Now, working with cables and lugs and all that stuff is going to be a very time-consuming element of this, and so I want to talk through what I chose. Now, links are in the description. Um, I'm not an Amazon affiliate. This is just what I used. Maybe I'll join Amazon affiliates in the future. I don't know, but um, like forewarning or fair warning, if I ever do join that program. So the, the, the wire I chose for all my 12 volt loads is this marine wire. Um, and the, the choice of here, I, I generally chose 12 gauge, um, just so I had one gauge running through all the walls. Now what's nice about marine grade wire is it's tin coated. Um, it has a lot of strands in the conductor and it has a very heavy duty sheath here or a PVC jacket in this case. You want to use a marine grade wire because it's flexible and can handle the vibrations of, uh, of your van um, or your trailer or whatever you're doing electrical wise. Don't use the Home Depot stuff. Um, get the proper marine grade wire. Now this was for um, the 12 volt loads and so I, you need uh, triplex for um, all your AC loads, so your 120 volt loads. Um, this is the one I used, also marine grade wire, but now you've got white, black, and green. Um, as far as sizing goes, uh, I would recommend Blue C's Circuit Wizard to calculate all your runs. And this is what Blue C's Circuit Wizard looks like. You find, uh, and this is for their DC loads, so you, you've you input your 12 volt circuit, how many loads you expect on that, or how many amps you expect on that circuit. So let's say 20 amps, you've got, let's say a 10 foot run, and it will tell you what gauge you need. Generally, I just threw 12 gauge in the, the wall. Moving on to the next type of cable, um, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of red and black cables in various spots. Now, these are welding cables. They are made out of uh, temper tempered copper, and they're very flexible, high strand count. So this is, the, this is a, an example of what I, I used. Um, I've had good luck with this Windy Nation brand on Amazon. And they come in all different sizes. Once again, use that Blue Sea Circuit Wizard um, to calculate what gauge you need. Um, and I will talk through what gauges I picked uh, when we're talking through the actual system. When you're working with these large um, gauge cables, uh, you need ways to cut them, you need ways to crimp them, and heat shrink, and all that stuff. So the lugs that I found um, best were these heavy-duty tin copper lugs. Um, this cell term like I, I had good luck with them. Now, one thing I, I picked out is you'll see how um, right in the at the end where the wire connects is actually closed. Some of them are open there. I chose the closed ones. Um, and the goal or what you need to do here is pick the right wire gauge and the right uh, uh, ring terminal size. Um, and each one will be specific to your application here. Surprisingly, there's differences in heat shrink. Um, I used to think that all heat shrink was the same. I've come to really like this three to one heat shrink, um, and it has a, a an adhesive uh, inside of it that just seems to work well. Um, I've used that Harbor Freight stuff 
it seemed to work fine. This stuff was just better, and I, I liked it. Um, you're going to need a way to crimp these wires or crimp those lugs onto the wires. Now, this is a hydraulic crimper. It is cheap, and it got the job done, but it was kind of... Um, I don't want to say garbagey, but this is not a professional grade tool, no matter what the instructions say. So the, the idea here is that you can put the, the cable in the dies and crimp that lug on. Now the problem is it says that these are American wire gauge um, um, dies. So you can see here like two, uh, two odd corresponds to a number 70. Um, they're not, that's the short of it. So these are cheaply made dies that will get the job done if you're careful and do extra work. So what I would do, or what I did, was let's say that I needed to crimp a, um, a four gauge wire. So I would strip the, the, the cable um, appropriate, put a four gauge lug on there. Now I would crimp it on with the four gauge die. Then I would remove that die and move it to the one size down. So I would put in the six gauge die. I would crimp it again, not all the way, um, but pretty much all the way to get a really good connection. So every time I crimped uh, on a lug, I had to start with the appropriate die and then move one step smaller and try to get a really good crimp. Otherwise, it's just not a good connection, and these connections are really, really important. So this is the, the hydraulic crimper I got. It's not a professional-grade tool, but the professional-grade tool is like three times more expensive. So it got the job done. You're also going to be working with a lot of, of wire here. Um, I found these quick strippers or wire strippers to be incredibly valuable for stripping sheath and just getting everything working really quickly. Um, the, you're going to need a lot of butt connectors and uh, smaller gauge um, ring terminals. Uh, so this crimping tool for heat shrink connectors is the right tool to use. This is a, a cheap one and it got the job done. Sometimes it's easier not to use like butt connectors with heat shrink. Um, for those situations, I, I use these lever nuts. These things are incredibly useful. They're kind of expensive, but they're incredibly useful, especially for connecting wires of different size. So you can see that you can just shove the, you strip the wire, you shove it in the lever nut, and then you just snap that lever closed and it's, it's all good. Super fast, super easy, awesome. They're just kind of expensive. I really tried to focus on keeping my wiring clean. Um, and so I've got another picture of how I was able to work in this panel. Um, you can see that the, I, I really tried to keep all these wires super clean and organized. Now, one thing that really helped me here was the zip tie saddle mounts. Um, and so what you do is you put a screw through the center and then a zip tie slides through it and then you can zip tie something to the wall. Super handy. Um, there's other ways to do this, but this is what I had and this is what I used and I liked it. You'll also need a way, a way to uh, cut these cables, um, the, the thicker ones, all the way up to 4 aught. Um, and these are the, the cable cutters I got. It seemed to work really well. And I was able to also use these to strip the sheath on the, um, or strip the jacket on the, the, the cable. Now that we've talked about all the cables and the wires and the tools you're going to need um, for the electrical system, let's talk about charging. And the, the easiest place to start off with is this DC to DC charger right here. Now what this does is it charges your battery system when your van is running. Um, and so on one side of this, it's going to be hooked up to the positive terminal of your battery. Um, there's going to be a circuit breaker between your uh, your main starter battery and this um, this DC to DC charger. Um, so it's going to go main battery, circuit breaker. There's a link down below. It's a blue C circuit breaker. And then this wire right here is a six gauge. Uh, let me get that in blue. Is a six gauge uh, welding cable. Now you'll notice that there's only 
a red um, uh, a red cable here. And that's because this entire system is going to be grounded through the, the, the actual chassis. Um, I'll show you that here in a second. So you only need a red cable going back from your battery. Um, once the DC to DC charger does its magic and it gets electricity from uh, the, 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 the starter battery, um, which is being charged via the alternator, it converts it, runs an algorithm, and outputs it into this white wire that I have right there. Um, and that goes all the way back to um, a, a bus bar, which I'll show you also here in a second. So moving on to the next way I can charge this battery system is via solar power. Now the roof of the van has solar panels on it. Um, it's a small solar array of only 500 watts, um, or at least it's a small solar array for this size battery, but for my application, it's perfectly sized. What's happening there is I've got a solar panel or set of solar panels in the roof. And then this wire right there, that red and the black, is the the special purpose solar wire now i am running these 500 pan, or watt panels in parallel so these are 12 volt panels there's five of them and i am running them in parallel um, i'm doing this to prevent um, shadows and partial shading from um, degrading performance unfortunately when i keep everything at 12 volts the current is going to be pretty high so this is actually eight gauge solar wire, super pain, uh, super pain in the butt to work with, but it's the best I could do. I would love and would recommend uh, trying to go with at least 24 volt uh, for your solar panels, but with five solar panels, I just couldn't do it, couldn't make it work. So that's what I went with. So the the solar panels connect with this um, this red and black wire. Now here is a circuit breaker, which is going to act as the disconnect um, uh, between the solar panels and the rest of the electrical system. So solar panels, you can't really turn off. The sun is shining, um, or I guess unless it's at night. So if you need to disconnect them from the electrical system, you need a breaker. And this is the special type of breaker for, um, for solar panels in this application. It's also housed in a box. Links are below. Now, once the electricity or the, the, the current gets from the solar panels into the van through that circuit breaker, it outputs over here into the solar charger. Um, the solar charger is way oversized for um, my application, um, but I purchased this when I was thinking about putting a lot more solar on the van. So I'm stuck with what I have and I'd rather have more capacity than less capacity but you don't need one that's this big for a 500 watt panel. Fully aware of that. But what the, the, the solar charger does is it takes the current from the, the, the solar panels, uh, runs an algorithm on it, um, converts it into a voltage that can charge your batteries and life is good. So now that I've covered charging um, via the, the uh, the engine, so the, the DC to DC charger, and talking about solar, let's move over here and let me get a close up of those that system. So this is the heart of the system um, and is going to power the, the van. So let's start up here. Now this is going to be special to my application, um, this thing right there. That is connecting all four batteries to a common bus bar. So there's all four of these 200 amp hour um, lithium batteries are connected in parallel. And so they're still operating on 12 volts. And these are connected to a bus bar. Um, I, there's a variety of reasons I chose to go this way instead of custom building a large 800 amp hour um, single battery. For most people, though, they're going to choose or you're going to choose a 200 amp hour uh, set of batteries and just build them exactly like this. Now these are each, these wires, these welding cables are each four gauge wires. I size them using Blue Sea's Circuit Wizard. You want to use the biggest ones you can that are reasonable um, for your application. So important, important, important note here, when you're uh, cutting these cables, um, you are going to want 
them all to be the exact same length so that each battery has the same res electrical resistance. This might seem silly. Um, and if you look over here, there's like a lot of extra um, wire that is just sort of stuck there um, and that I had to organize. And that is so that all the wires are the exact same length. You want them as short as possible, but the exact same length. So the length from over here, oh geez, this is getting really messy. So the length from this furthest battery um, is the, the limiting factor or the, that all the cables are sized to that length. There are other ways of doing this using 4 aught cable, um, but this was the best solution for, for my setup. All right, so these four cables are connecting the battery to the main electrical system. They go in this um, Victron Lynx uh, Power In um, device and are hooked up to uh, bus bars. One thing that I did is this does not come with any internal fuses. Um, and uh, I added fuses, I'll put a link down there. Um, uh, Explorist uh, has a great video walkthrough of how, how to do this. It's beautiful, thank you Explorist, it's awesome. But each one of these cables needs to have some sort of fuse on it. Now, the ideal way to do this is, or a better, the best way I should say, to do this is to have the fuses very close to the batteries. So as close as, well, actually it'd be down here, um, as close to the battery as possible. That's best. I, like it just worked better for my system to have them within this box. Try to get your, your fuses or your breakers closer to the battery, but these, these cables are protected via fuses within this power in. Okay, so now I've got battery power going into this system. The, on the positive side, um, there's a positive bus bar. This, is, this thing right here is a disconnect. And so it's a blue C disconnect that will disconnect the, the, the positive end of the battery from the rest of the electrical system. Um, I connected this using the, there, on this power in, part there's a a the bus bar extends and then i fabricated one or i made a a sort of custom bus bar down there um out of copper you can see one on the negative side right there that is a, a copper bus bar that i made um i sized this appropriately um one thing that I learned is that not all copper is created the, the same and there's electrical grade copper. So I ordered some electrical grade copper from Granger. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. And in the scheme of things, you're building a really expensive battery. So um, this is the uh, appropriate grade copper for electrical bus bars. Um, I got it from Granger. McMaster Car has it also. Just take the time and get it. It's worth it. So moving on. So, so far we have power coming in from the batteries, getting combined on this uh, bus bar system, goes through the disconnect, and then goes down to this thing. This is a link or uh, a Victron Lynx power distributor. It's got a whole bunch of fuses in it, and um, but more or less it's the exact same as that device right there. It's just got some bus bars and some fuses. This is sort of the heart of the the distribution center. So one of these wires right here, up here, is where that solar charge controller um, attaches. Down here, inside that, is where the DC to DC charger attaches. That's from the um, uh, charging off the alternator. Now, over here is actually power that goes out of the system. This uh, goes to power the, the DC air conditioner. You can see that those are some pretty chunky cables. Um, those are two gauge cables and the, the DC air conditioner draws a pretty heavy load. There's a 75 amp um, fuse within this, uh, um, this distributor. So you can sort of understand that the, those cables need to, to be beefy. 
Now the final set or another set of cables coming out are these really, really, really beefy ones. And these are the ones that are going to feed the inverter. These are four aught cables. They're a pain to work with, um, but that's the size you need in order to power a very large inverter charger, such as the Multi Plus. Um, now you can't quite see, but at the bottom of this power distributor is two, the, the bus bars extend. This is part of Victron's system. Uh, so you can daisy chain these, these distributors together to make larger ones. I connected this negative. So it's right actually behind these two wires, connected that to the chassis over here um, in order to ground the entire system. That is with a four aught cable. Um, and that's also what's required in order to ground a system of this size. So you need a ground on this system. I am doing it through the, the negative bus bar on the, the power distribution um, system. Also off these, these posts, um, there's a bus bar extending from both sides, is a set of cables which will um, feed all the DC circuits in the van. So these are two six gauge cables and they run back here and come out right here. These are where all the DC loads go into the, the, the fuse panel, um, which is this entire box right here. Now I talked about the inverter element of, um, the multiplus and that is what is going to provide ac power to the van or to all the the, the induction burner and the miscellaneous outlets um, what is going on here uh, as far as that ac component is so it's taking battery power so dc power in right there and then this wire is uh homebrewed 6.3 um, wire the inverter is sending electricity, 120 volt AC electricity, so regular house electricity, from the inverter all the way up into this panel. Inside this panel is a regular circuit panel with you know your breakers, just like your house. Um, once that AC goes into the circuit panel, each one has its own breakers. Then it comes back out, and those white wires are what's feeding all the AC loads in the, in the, the van. Now, the other element of the inverter charger is, well, the charger element. And this charger element is another way to charge the battery. On the outside of a van, uh, the van is a 30 amp um, plug in which I can plug in 120 volt from the house into um, into the van and charge it. Now, if you want the 30 amp, you need to have a special outlet in your house, which can provide 30 amps. Under normal circumstances, like your normal garage outlet is gonna be 20 amps, and the charger, if it tried to pull 30 amps, it would blow the breaker in your house. And so what you can do for that is to get a, um, a controller. The controller um, that Victron has is this box right there. So they call it the multi-control. And what this knob does right there is it allows you to tune the amount of power draw from, the, the, from shore power. And so if you have a 20 amp outlet in your garage and you want to charge your van, um, just set the, the control knob to say maximum draw I don't know, let's say 15 amps, and the inverter charger will just draw, it will be limited to that 15 amps. This uh, switch over here can turn it into on, or turn the inverter on or off. Um, and if you want to just charge your van without running the inverter, um, well, you can have, there's a charger only option. One note, um, if you're if you're new to this your inverter will use power even when there's no loads and so if your van's just sitting there in the in your driveway or whatnot um you might as well turn off the inverter to save that power draw otherwise your battery is going to go flat 
The final part of the system that I want to talk about before moving on to the batteries is uh, a way to actually monitor the, the capacity of your battery, how much electricity you've used. So this thing right here is called a shunt. And what it does is it keeps track of how much electricity has gone into your battery and how much electricity has gone out of your battery. Um, this is what Victorin calls a smart shunt. So it synchronizes and takes care of a lot of features to your um, automatically. It's got a really cool app, um, but the way you hook it up is uh, you hook it up on your negative side between your battery um, and the system that draws electricity or charges um, your battery. And so each one of these really chunky cables um, is just acting as a, as a bridge between the battery. So on the battery negative, it's right there. And the, the battery negative, uh, or sorry, the, the system negative is right over here. And so electricity is just passing its way through that shunt. The shunt is keeping track of how much electricity is going into and out of your system. Now, to actually like physically monitor the, um, or to visually monitor the system, there is an app. The app is pretty cool. Or if you can see right here, um, up in this corner, um, there is a little round dial and it tells you all the stats on your battery. Helpful system, you need it in order to monitor your battery and so you just get it. Now I want to talk about these batteries right here. There's four of them. They're 200, uh, they're custom built 200 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now um, if I was doing the system on a smaller scale, um, or I didn't want to build the batteries for whatever reason, um, or for very reasonable reasons in that batteries are difficult to build, um, or I should say detail oriented to build. Um, each one of those batteries is equivalent to this Renogy 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with Bluetooth, the exact same thing. Um, actually, I, I would to say my batteries are a little bit better better because they use cylindrical cells, but that's neither here nor there. Um, what made me uh, it worthwhile to build my own batteries is that even the Renogy, which is towards the, the cheaper end of the, the system, they were a thousand bucks a piece. Um, I needed four of them. Uh, and, uh, well, when I built them, the cost was about $500 a piece. So it's saving, I don't know, two grand ish. Um, and honestly, I just find it interesting. So if you have no interest in, in buying, um, or building a battery, just buy these 200 amp hour ones, life will be good. And you can just drop them in. So back to these batteries, each one of them is that 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Each one of them is composed of eight battery or eight cell packs. And these are battery hookups, cylindrical cell packs. So each pack is a hundred amp hours at 3.2 volts. It's made up of 20 smaller cylindrical cells. Unfortunately, I don't have a link to those because battery hookup doesn't have them in stock right now, but, uh, there are eight packs of those. Now, uh, up here, what we've got is 150 amp um, rated uh, battery management systems. Um, and these are there to, or BMSs are there to protect the battery in case something went wrong. Fires are bad is, is the short of it. You don't want to over discharge or under dis or overcharge or over discharge these batteries. You want them, all the cells to stay balanced. Um, you don't want too much current going out too fast or too much current going in or charging them too fast. Um, and so these BMSs take care of it. What's nice is they also provide, each one of them provides Bluetooth. And so, um, I can use an app in order to monitor the health of each one of those, those batteries. Um, so this is the system I built. Um, it's 800 amp hours and it's there to power an AC and, um, and an induction burner plus other miscellaneous loads. Now I am fully aware that this is not big enough to run um, air conditioner all, off grid all the time. This system was designed in order to um, 
power an air conditioner and induction burner and just have it fully livable for like let's say three to five days in the pacific northwest it's cooler in the pacific northwest temperature wise um, so the ac is not going to be working as hard uh, the goal here is to leave the house at the beginning of the weekend with a full battery the charging from the solar and the DC D to DC is going to just sort of top up the battery the best possible, but I fully expect to be running at an energy deficit. And so the goal is to be able to get home after three to five days um, and have, let's say, 5% um, left in the battery bank um, and then recharge at home. If I needed more charging um, on the road, uh, I left room right here for another DC to DC charger. Um, that's gonna tax your alternator a little bit more. Um, and so maybe I need it, maybe I don't, but uh, I left room for it and I would prefer not to tax the alternator if I don't need to. Um, so this system was designed for this application. It probably is too small if you're a full timer um, and are living in Florida and trying to have off-grid air conditioning all the time. But for my application of a weekender or a road trip style um, power system, more than sufficient. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. There's links down below. Um, like I said, I'm not part of Amazon's affiliate program, but maybe in the future I'll join and I wanted to you know, warn you that that might happen. So thanks for watching.